So I started about 10 years ago um, and I was initially thinking that, oh, I'm going to study identity and I'm going to look at how what people are doing online kind of um, informs their sense of self and, you know, um, what they think their place in the world is. But it became quickly apparent that um, visuals and photos and selfies are, are a really important part of what people are doing. And everybody in the first set of interviews that I did kept telling me about how when they take pictures or when they look at other people's pictures and think, hmm, you know, could I take a picture of that and then post them and the interactions they have around them, that that's the interesting bit. So I kind of just let myself be abducted or, you know, carried away with that. So then selfies became a huge focus and um, I was kind of um, interpreting everything I saw through that lens. I continue saying that I'm a social media researcher. So that keeps uh, kind of, it continues to be a, a red thread. Although sometimes I now broaden it and say, you know, like network technologies. So it's not just about platforms and apps, but um, it might be a little bit also about um, the devices and, and just the kind of the felt and experienced ecosystem where, where there are people and their agency and their desires and wishes. And then there's the technologies on the level of the device and the kind of infrastructural surface, services and on the level of the interfaces that they use and what those allow. I have been thinking about research ethics in particular in the context when the things that you are studying are happening either entirely or partially online. Initially, it kind of started out of necessity because when I started my field work, our, in, my institution didn't have an um, ethics committee or an ethics oversight board or even any kind of systematic advice. Um, on ethics, and I, I joined the Association of Internet Researchers very early and their ethics committee really early. So I knew that there were pe other people who were thinking about it. So I thought, okay, so, you know, I feel uncomfortable without doing it, without having thought about it, or without having a system, or without having a set of priorities. Um, and then I started reading you know, across different kind of bodies of literature for what those priorities are. And some of them resonated better with me and what I saw in the field and what I felt would be both fair and reasonable, but also kind of pragmatic and doable. So now this talk is the latest iteration of um, this thought process um, that I've had on situational ethics and on ethics of care. Um, and I've, I've kept adding to it. So now I am at three C's. I don't know, maybe next year I will be at four C's, but currently I am at three C's, um, which are care, context, and uh, critique. With either with any of the three C's, if you only think of one, it's really easy to kind of dip into this kind of almost dogmatism. There's this one principle, whatever, like contextuality or care, or um, I haven't seen critique being made the central one um, in ethics very much. But you know, you pick this one thing, and then that's your um, that's your kind of test of of whether you're good or bad, right? It's not the best way, at least not for me. Uh, so I like that they balance each other out because then it's applicable to more empirical situations than just your own one particular study. My area is kind of new and interesting is it's defining feature, which means that um, everything is constantly changing. Um, and it's actually rather than trying to kind of jump on the new and interesting train, it's almost more important to um, weigh whether you really want to and whether it might be a fad. In particular, um, I think um, this is the case with app or platform specific research questions, right? So if it's not about a practice or a cultural phenomena or a, a group of people or power relations, but it is about uh, a platform or an app. 
And I'm not saying that uh, research that offers a snapshot of any given year and any given kind of dominant app isn't valuable. It absolutely is. Um, but it might be quite distressing for early career researchers, especially if they're, for example, working towards their uh, PhD to realize that, you know, like, oh, I was going to do this, but it's no longer a thing. And while it actually doesn't matter that it's no longer a thing to avoid yourself, the, the, the heartache, right, it might be more sustainable to build your research questions on the kind of almost um, a conventional units of analysis of um, the underlying philosophy that your discipline is built on, right? So meaning making or practices or relationships or I don't know, power relations or something like that. Um, because those things are all still there and all still fantastically fabulous, uh, uh, fascinating. And some of them are um, sh like shifting or changing or transforming in really weird um, and interesting ways with technology.